Hello everyone, this is Alchemisted, and this is once again Star Trek Online Rise of the Red Shirt. This time we're going to be doing What Lies Beneath. Uh, this is kind of a repeat uh, for me. I did this for Halloween last year, I believe I said before, and uh, this is a much better mission than uh, Spin the Wheel. Although, uh, the last time I did it, it was at full resolution. Uh, since then, uh, you know, I had it running with all the, the bells and whistles going on. And, uh, the flashlight still kind of didn't work. Yeah, so, kind of with a little bit of trepidation, because I'm going into this, because I know I'm going to be running into walls half the time down there. Uh, I'm also going to show off how you can, in fact, keep the flashlight. Although, it does cause problems if you use the flashlight outside of this mission. Uh, however... It's a cool little thing. It's a cool... Th I like having a flashlight. My away team should have flashlights. Like, this should be standard equipment for my away team. A flashlight, you know? You know, just like a little palm beacon. So, I'm going to show you a way to keep that. That is, unless they've fixed it. But, uh, I will endeavor to try. And, uh, yeah. So, let's go ahead and get started. Lies beneath. It's clear that the Davidians are more of a problem than we initially thought. We know they're in the neutral zone. Now we know they're on Drazana Station as well. And according to Zamara, there have already been deaths there. In addition, she indicated that the lower levels of the station were a trouble spot. Those levels aren't used as part of the club there, and they haven't been maintained for years. And the Ferengi are, of course, quite reticent to put any effort into any maintenance that isn't absolutely necessary. That means we don't really know what's down there. Zamara's code should get you access. Take a lift down and check it out. Previous Starfleet encounters with Davidians have indicated that they will create nests around the temporal portals they use, so keep an eye out for anomalies. If we find the portal, we'll know where and when the Davidians are feeding. Oh, and I expect it to be a messy down there. Don't forget to take an emergency beacon. That's the uh, flashlight. So, as a reward, we get the Triolic Pattern Enhancer. I already have one of which. And what this baby does, and I may deploy it here because it actually makes it easier to see in the in um, the bowels of Jazana Station. Uh, what this does is basically it creates a area, a zone, where your defense goes up. Although it doesn't particularly... It doesn't feel like it does a great deal. Like, you do, res like, it is a slightly noticeable buff, but for the most part, it's just there to be cool. However, it generate it also generates a lot of aggro, uh, which makes it effective for kiting enemies along a specific path. Like, this is essential in the Special Task Force missions, where the Borg will go after the, or at least they would, go after the Triolic Pattern Enhancer. So, instead of, sen instead of them going after, say, the, uh, door opener devices in the cure. Instead, you would lay down a triolic pattern enhancer, and they'd go for that thing first to take it out. And the whole time they were going after it, you could just shoot at them and kill them. So this this uh, comes in handy, although probably not the uh, way it was intended. But yeah, when you walk into the triolic pattern enhancer's field of effect, it changed everything to have this like blue light, and it actually lights up the area around you. So this is actually something that's useful down in the bowels of Drazana. So I'm going to equip it. I'm going to equip it uh, over my crossfire triple. Or not. Yeah. I still don't have my... Uh, I still don't have my full auto rifle. So let's go ahead and leave the ship interior. I still don't have my full auto rifle, but I believe we will be running past an exchange kiosk before we head down to the uh, bowels of Drazana. So let's go shopping. I've got a shit ton of energy credits, so... Let's go see if we can't find ourselves a uh, full auto rifle. So deep space K7. Am I going the right way? We'll find out soon enough. Drozana, yes, I am going the right way. There it is. Every time I'm once again astounded by how long I've had this ship. It's been it's been over a year now. 
And that's Trek. That's one ship, one crew. You know, that's the way it goes. That's the way it is in Trek. You've got your ship, you've got your crew. You know, you've got you've got the family together. You know, that's that's the way it always is in every series, especially shows like TNG and Deep Space Nine. Not so much Voyager because half the crew really didn't have as much character development as they should have. I'm talking, of course, of you know, the most prominent examples being Chakotay and Harry Kim on Voyager. Uh, Chakotay did nothing on that show. I I believe the actor uh, Robert Beltran was actually very pissed off that Chakotay didn't have shit to do. But I haven't read this yet, so let's go ahead. Dorzana Station is an old Federation deep space station located in the midst of the Federation Klingon neutral zone. Over a century of warfare has taken its toll on the station, which has changed hands many times. It is currently a dilapidated trading hub managed by Ferengi. So let's go ahead and go back to Drazana. Like I said, this is the station where the station and its environs are where we're going to be uh, uh, hanging around for the rest of the uh, Davidian missions. After this one, there are only two. Uh, both of them cool. I actually like the next one a lot more than the one after. The fifth one, uh, what is it called? Night of the Comet. I said this last time. I said it earlier today. I, I recorded and rendered uh, Spin the Wheel earlier today. I've gone insane with these because I want to get them done. Uh, Akira! No, that's not an Akira. It's got pieces of an Akira. Um, but, not yet. Or, you know what? They, yeah, go ahead. A. A. Docket station. Um, but, yeah, the, the ending to Night of the Comet is, again, it's, it's like Doomsday Device. You go ahead and watch the ending of Doomsday Device. You'll see my problems with that. It's a big clusterfuck of just what is going on. You know, it's just ships everywhere, everything shooting at you. You're trying desperately to complete the mission. You're constantly getting nailed by ships that are over a hundred years less advanced than yours. Is you, are you a Starfleet Klingon? Oh, you're an alien. He's patterned himself as a Starfleet Klingon, though. He's got the, uh, he's got the, uh, various pieces. So is this the exchange? No, that's the mail. I want the full auto rifle, because Lima's already got a sniper rifle. Yeah, there it is. Let's see. Harper. And he's got an engineering kit, I believe. Is that an engineering kit? Or is that a tactical kit? I think that's an engineer. Yeah, yeah that he's an engineer. That's an engineering kit. God, science and engineering kits look so much fucking better. What the hell is that? Oh, it's a patch. For a second I thought, that better not be a mobile emitter. Although, photonic... Can you make a photonic character? I don't think so. So, let's see. Phaser. Gotta go with phaser. Gotta go with the phaser rifle. Okay, purple. Okay, Mark 3. Jesus! Oh, there it is. Laser Full Auto Rifle Mark 11. Uh, let's see. Crit DX2. Gee! Crit H. 25 phaser damage. Damage. 99. 40 damage. 40 phaser damage. Three. Is there something going on with like the dis the displays here? Okay, so I'm gonna go crit DX times two and damage. It's eight hundred, but So, crit D increases the critical severity, crit H uh, increases the critical chance, and uh, damage increases the weapon's base damage. But I think I'm just going to go with severity and damage. So, yeah. Because that's about as much as I'm willing to spend looking at the prices here. So let's go ahead. That looks good.
That that was about half of my wallet. Say, let's see, here's my to eat. Plus forty critical severity. Five DPS, pulse wave assault, assault minigun, five DPS. So yeah, let's go ahead and replace the minigun because this actually will allow us to do uh, it'll reload faster, which will allow us to do more damage. And I just I like having like the cannon loadout, like as I've said before. And while this doesn't particularly look cannon with the blue sparkly things, it's still a phaser rifle. I'm Starfleet. I should be using phaser weapons. I'm a Starfleet tactical officer. Uh, so now, and uh, for some reason, you are not my primary mission, and you should be. What lies beneath? My primary? The depths of Drazana. Harper's strutting his stuff. Let's see. Go to the Drazana maintenance levels. And I think I'll stick with my uh, regular awake. Should I bring four? Four acquitted himself very admirably last time. Should I bring him again? Let's go ahead and bring four because that healing may come in handy. Go ahead. Oh, and I can give him the synchronic proton distortion rifle. It's the most Borgy weapon. I it's the most Borg-looking weapon I have. There will supposedly be actually, like, Borg weapons that you can acquire. Like, the severed Borg forearm or whatever that have, like, cannons in them. Perhaps. I've heard talk of Borg ground sets, so I'm assuming that includes, you know, things like armor and shield and weapons. Sir, I'm reading temporal fluctuations and triolic energy in these levels of the station. Staying down here for too long could be hazardous. The interference also may make it difficult to contact the ship or to get a transporter lock if we need an emergency beam out. This level primarily contains power junctions and EPS conduits for the rooms above us. We need to reach the maintenance lift and take that down to the computer core. Alright. So let me go ahead and hand you... Eight's old weapon for... The weapon 8 used to carry around when she too was covered in her old Borg implants, and that's the most Borg looking weapon I've got. So 4 is going to go ahead and carry that. Alrighty. Let's do this. Take emergency flashlight. This box of emergency supplies isn't just lying around. Bellin probably bartered with a Nausicaan pirate for it. I recognize these flashlight drones. Hands-free hover system, and programmed to shift in response to your movement. Not the most reliable design, though. Just not kidding. And it's actually going to force me to uh, use this in lieu of something, which I'm going to f use it in lieu of the shields, because... The uh, shields don't do shit against the Davidians. Like, in lieu of my, like, shield recharge. Triolic waves. There must be Davidians nearby. I expect that we will see more as we approach the area with the greatest concentration of triolic energy. Sir, I'm also picking up some indeterminate readings from behind the door to our left. However, the interference from the triolic waves are making hard to get... No, it's not. Are making hard to get accurate scans at a distance. At first I thought I had flubbed it, but I didn't. I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be an it there. So yeah, this flashlight fails pretty constantly. Basically, whenever the Davidians show up, it fails. Looks like the door is stuck, sir. We'll have to find another way around. One of the side maintenance passages should have an alternate route. Jesus, spiders! Fuck! No fitty in the sh limo, fitty in the shit out of those spiders. One hit KO. So they said the door to the left.
And it had like a little message saying, Flashlight went out! Ah! Scan Frankie. This Frankie suffered from trialic radiation poisoning. It seems that he's been here for a while, sir. Even if the Davidians couldn't use his neural energy, it's still dangerous to be too close to their nest. There's nothing we can do for now. Due to the temporal flux disrupting the transporters, we can't even beam the body out. Once we get out of here, we can notify station security. So, uh, yeah, the name of the game in this mission is Atmosphere, and it has it in spades. Check power distribution grid. Captain, it appears that the maintenance levels are suffering from intermittent power problems. The EPS conduits are probably overloaded due to the temporal fluctuations. This station's pretty old, sir, and many of these components are more than a century old. I'm seeing triolic surges near the maintenance lift and across multiple levels, but nothing that can be consistently tracked. I kind of flubbed that one, sorry. Consistently. Con! I can't do it right. No Davidians, the flashlight didn't go out. This door is locked. Yeah, this is the 25th century. Shouldn't we have, like, night vision? Like, built into our eyes? Or is that too transhuman for Starfleet? Starfleet has a re gets really, really, really wigged out by transhumanist stuff. So I'm actually going to turn off the uh, uh, flashlight here, because while I was playing through this with David JGB00, Revan, you are fucking ass over here. Revan! Revan! Get over here! We're not done here. We've got a job to do. Revan! <laughs> Fuck this shit, I'm out of here. Unclench your ass cheeks, Revan, we're going in. I'm actually turning off the flashlight, because when I was playing through this with David at JGB00, I got stuck in the floor. Uh, a chunk of the ceiling is going to fall here. Here? Aha! Come on, Four. I know you've seen scarier shit than this. You're a Borg. Nothing this way. Uh, probably nothing that way either. So we'll go here. I've got contacts. I got spiders. I hate spiders. I fucking hate spiders. Oh, that was kind of creepy. Okay, is everyone here? Revan? Okay, good. This flashlight doesn't do shit. Uh-oh.
Now you noticed uh, back while I was fighting that Umbral that his damage goes straight through your shields. So your shields don't mean shit against these guys, basically. Their, their attacks will go straight through your shields. They won't even damage your shields. They won't even hit them. The Davidians are definitely getting more aggressive. They could have a lair somewhere in the lower levels. If they do, they'll become increasingly more violent as we get closer to their lair. The Synchronic Proton Rifle should have a significant effect against the Davidians. The Proton Beam mode will be especially effective while the Davidians are phase shifted. So yeah. Good thing to know. Someone's put the lift on emergency lockdown. We'll have to override the lockdown code to access it. Alright. That should do it. I wonder why someone would lock down the lift in the first place. Gotta use the control panel. Josana maintenance levels. This isn't the computer core level. Sir, it appears that the lift is stuck. We're somewhere on a maintenance level for environmental controls and waste recycling. We'll need to track down the damaged junctions on this floor and repair or bypass them before we can take the lift to the computer core level. On that fucking flashlight. Oh, it was on. <laughs> and it just wasn't lighting up anything like it isn't right now. See, you see what I'm talking about with the flashlight being really unreliable. And uh, most of the time when it does illuminate something, all you see is like this gray featureless mess like right now. Someone's locked the door with an encryption key. It looks like the key itself is a killer quad long. Sir, if we don't find that key, we could be stuck here for a long time. Are you there, Captain? Your signal is... There's too much interference, sir. Looks like we're on our own. Emergency door lock. Well, that wasn't hard. <laughs> spiders. I hate spiders. What the hell is that? Captain, the door, we're locked in. That's what that was. 